Good morning to everyone. Welcome to today's lecture. I'm Dr. Priyanka, lecturer in prosthetic dentistry. Today's topic is maxillofacial prosthetics. Uh, these are the learning outcomes, uh, which uh, so at the end of this lecture, you will be able to classify the maxillofacial defects and prosthesis. Describe the obturator processes and splints. Summarize the materials used in fabrication of maxillofacial prosthesis. Coming to the introduction, uh, maxillofacial abnormalities are described as congenital structural deformities, malformation or abnormalities of maxilla, face or facial bones. In most cases, abnormal developments of facial organs or oral cavity can affect the facial functions, shape of the face, personal appearance, which can considerably, considerably cause psychological and emotional problems, such as lack of uh, self-confidence, low self-esteem, and poor quality of life. As the patient's quality of life is significantly altered, social integration becomes difficult and expectations to return to normal life collapses. So coming to the definition of uh, maxillofacial prosthodontics, it is a branch, particular branch of dentistry that treats congenital and acquired defects of the head and neck region. It involves rehabilitation, managing replacement and restoration of lost or missing structures and functions of maxillofacial defects or disabilities. The objectives of maxillofacial prosthetics include the restoration of aesthetics or cosmetic appearance and conserving maxillofacial functions as well as psychological therapy. Um, this branch also collaborates uh, collaboratively integrates multiple disciplinary uh, including prosthetic dentistry that is prosthodontics head and neck, neck and oncology plastic surgery and other related disciplines so it's a the multidisciplinary approach it can be described as so in order to achieve success in rehabilitating of a patient we need to have close cooperation and consultation with different health professionals. So a team approach usually involves surgeon, radiotherapist, speech therapist, psychiatrist, and a dentist for prosthetic rehabilitation. Maxillofacial prosthetics is the art and science of anatomic, functional, or cosmetic reconstruction by means of non-living um, substitutes of those regions in the maxilla mandible face that are missing or defective because of surgical intervention trauma pathology or developmental or congenital malformations or it can be also described as the branch of prosthodontics concerned with the restoration and or replacement of the um uh, the uh, the stone nomatic and craniofacial structures with prosthesis that may or may not be removed on a regular or elective basis. This is according to the GPT. So indication for the MFP, that is the maxillofacial uh, prosthetics, is after surgical intervention, after trauma, congenital defects, and uh, acquired defects. Benefits of maxillofacial prosthetics is restoring organ structures and functions, cosmetic advantages, regaining self-confidence, improvement of patient's quality of life, types of maxillofacial deformities. There are three types of maxillofacial deformities. So that is congenital, acquired, or developmental. Congenital defects are cleft palate, cleft lip, facial cleft, and missing ear. Acquired defects can be due to accidents, 
or surgery. So due to accidents, it can be traumatic injuries. <coughs> uh, due to surgery, it can be tumors, which are most commonly seen. Or uh, the third one is a pathology. The developmental defects can be prognathism or retrognathism. So type of uh, MFPs are, it can be classified into two main types based on the positions. So intraoral and extraoral processes. As you can see in the chart, it can be divided into four, that is tissue retained, implant retained, tooth retained, or implant or tissue retained. In tissue retained, uh, the, you can see cranial, ocular, or vital and nasal processes comes. Um, in implant retained, uh, we can include uh, orbital, facial, auricular. In tooth retained, uh, obturator processes, mandibular resection processes, or orthopedic uh, craniofacial processes can be included. In implant or tissue retained, auricular processes and facial processes can be included. Coming to the extraoral processes, and extra oral processes acts like a cosmetic band-aid that camouflages the surgical defects with regard to aesthetic concerns. The most important feature of this processes is the natural appearance that helps enhance the patient's confidence. Material most commonly used is silicon, which has high degree of flexibility and cosmetic advantages which plays a major role in patient satisfaction. So those can be orbital, ocular processes, auricular processes, and nasal processes. In the photo, you can appreciate the auricular processes on the top, and in the bottom photo, you can see nasal processes. Again, uh, there is an example in the top photo of the nasal processes. Um, below, you can see an uh, orbital or an ocular processes. Intra coming to the intraoral processes, the main purpose of intraoral prosthetics is to restore functions, the basic functions, and appearance in patients with oral cavity defects. The material of process is mainly made from acrylic due to its satisfactory flexibility and durability. The process involves several complex steps, starting from dental impressions and uh, surgical and prosthetic procedures. Uh, so these can be obturators, speech aids, or infant feeding plates. So coming to the obturators, uh, it is uh, defined as a maxillofacial processes used to close a congenital or acquired tissue opening primarily of the hard palate and or, uh, or the alveolar or soft tissue structures. Uh, this is according to the GPT-7. Prosthetic res uh, restoration of a defect often includes use using of the surgical obturator, interim obturator, and a definitive obturator. So types of obturator, it can be classified as based on phase of treatment, based on material used, and based on the area of restoration. Based on the phase of treatment, it can be surgical obturator, interim obturator, and definitive obturator. So there, it can be divided into three phases. That's the surgical phase. Um, the surgical phase consists of the surgical obturator, which is divided into the intermediate and delayed. In the healing phase, it can be um, cl uh, classified as interim or called as interim obturator, which can be again divided into immediate or delayed. Healed phase is a definitive obturator. So coming to the surgical obturators, a temporary maxillofacial prosthesis inserted during or immediately following surgical or traumatic loss of a portion or all of one or both maxillary bones and um, 
contiguous alveolar structures. So as you can see in the picture below. Immediate surgical obturator is an appliance which is constructed from the preoperative impression cast and inserted at the time of resection of the maxilla in the operating room. So as you can appreciate in the left photo, squamous cell carcinoma on, you know, the right maxillary bone is, you know, uh, is there. Then on the right uh, photo, you can see a surgical obturator wired in place after the tumor was removed. The advantages of these obturators are processes provides a matrix on which the surgical packing can be placed. Processes reduces the oral contamination of the wound, thus reducing the incidence of local infection. Prosthesis enables the patient to speak more effectively post-operatively by reproducing the normal palatal contours. Prosthesis permits deglutition, thus the nasogastric tube can be removed at an earlier stage. Prosthesis may reduce the period of hospitalization. So coming to the interim obturator, uh, which is a maxillofacial prosthesis, which is made following completion of initial healing, following surgical resection of a portion or all of one or both maxillae. Frequently, many or all teeth in the defect are replaced by this prosthesis. This prosthesis replaces the surgical obturator, which is usually inserted at or immediately following the resection. Generally, an interim obturator is made to facilitate closure of the reluctant resultant defect after initial healing has been completed. So, an alternative is to place the processes 7 to 10 days post surgical after initial healing and removal of the pack of immediate obturator is used is usually discarded and replaced by transitional or temporary prosthesis having a definitive bulbous extension and occasionally artificial anterior teeth so you can see in the left photo which shows a soft palate defect so patient has a defect in the upper uh, palate due to surgery um, uh, to uh, remove um, a mucoepidermoid cancer. Um, so a process is on the right side. You can see a obturator uh, processes for the soft tissue. A soft palate defect has been created. Coming to definitive obturators. So these are maxillofacial processes that replaces part or all of the maxilla and associated teeth lost due to surgery or trauma. And uh, uh, another definition can be a definitive obturator is made when it is deemed that further tissue changes or reoccurrence of tumor are unlikely and a more permanent prosthetic rehabilitation can be achieved. It is intended for long-term use. So three to four months after surgery consideration may be given to the construction of the definitive obturator prosthesis. The timings will vary depending on the size of the defect the prognosis of the healing, prognosis of the tumor control, the effectiveness of the present obturator, and the presence or absence of teeth. So as you can see in the left photo, there's a large soft palate defect. The patient has had a large portion of the soft palate removed. On the right side, you can see that uh, obturator processes for large soft tissue defect has been fabricated. 
based on the material used it also can be classified the obturators that is metal obturators resin obturators and silicon obturators based on the area of restoration it can be divided as palatal obturator or meatal obturator ideal requirements of a material should have a lifelike feel and appearance should be easy to color and characterize it must be color stable when subjected to heat cold or sunlight should be non-toxic non-irritating biocompatible and it should be resilient enough and hygienic prosthetic materials used in fabrication of uh, the mfp these are acrylic resins that is methyl methacrylate uh, polymethyl methacrylate then comes the latex uh, then comes the vinyl polymers or copolymers then comes the polyurethane uh, and then silicon which are room temperature or heat uh, 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 vulcanizing then comes the ventured structural polymers so retention of the processes anatomical anatomic retention includes the retention from remaining natural teeth alveolar ridge or residual hard palate the mechanical retention includes eyeglasses medical grade adhesives implants attachment and magnets so coming to the adhesives historically facial prosthesis has been retained by various mechanical devices. Recently, adhesives has been used. They are poly polymeric compounds which have been modified with solvents and um, other fluids. Selection of adhesive is based on biocompatibility, retentive uh, properties, ease of applicability, removal on daily basis, and uh, nature of the material from which processes is fabricated so you can see the photos of the adhesives adhesives uh, to retain a processes are available in the form of paste liquid emulsions spray-ons double-sided tapes and velcro. so you can see the velcro tape the double-sided tape in the photos so tissue implants coming to the tissue implants implants are processes surgically placed within the tissues to restore a defect in contour or continuity facial silicon implants used for restoring a defect in the contour of the face then comes to the mandibular implants used to restore the mandibular continuity after a tumor surgery then coming to the cad cam maxillofacial processes so these processes are usually fabricated on the basis of impression made with dental impression materials to the extent um, to which the processes reproduces normal facial morphologies depends on the clinical judgment of the individual fabricating the processes and the computer aided the CAD CAM system for the fabrication of these processes provide a more consistently accurate reproduction of facial morphologies so coming to the technique uh, measurements are taken using the non-contact 3d laser morphological measurement system and sent to the computer numerical control that is the cnc milling machine to generate a cast for the fabrication of processes facial contours are measured using a laser this method minimizes patient's discomfort and avoids soft tissue distortions often seen when using impression materials so the technique basically has uh, six steps and uh, we'll be talking about this in the next uh, slide so here you can see so starting with the facial defect you can see on the first photograph um, 
then comes the data data the first step is the data acquisition of the whole face and nose geometry so you can see that the facial and the nose geometry has been uh, you know uh, seen uh, formed then comes the virtual reconstruction of the nose adjustment and positioning so in the fourth photograph you can see all these things being done on the um, facial defect uh, coming to the third um, step that is the manufacturing of the nose protocol via the rapid prototyping model or morphology uh, then comes the mold fabrication uh, then comes the manufacturing of the silicon prosthesis and the last photo is the final fitting of the patient's face so these are the basic design process and the methodology of the facial prosthesis manufacturing. So to summarize the lecture, prosthetic rehabilitation of maxillofacial defects is most challenging. It requires teamwork from the surgical team and the prosthetic team for successful outcome of the prosthesis. It is important to focus on restoring the function and aesthetics of an individual, thereby improving the psychological state of a patient after a trauma or surgery. Thank you for patient listening.